Today we're gonna be wrapping up, Lord willing, this series called Finding God's Will. Billy Graham made this statement years ago that the will of God will not take us where the grace of God cannot sustain us. Did you hear that? The will of God ain't gonna take you where the grace of God cannot sustain you. In other words, if it's God's will, he's gonna give you what you need to make it through to the other side. That's called God's provision. And how many have had God's provision handed to you? He's provided for you. The the word describes him as Jehovah Jireh. He is the provider. But if we go back to Matthew chapter six, verse 10, Jesus is praying this prayer, thy kingdom come, and then he says this, thy will be done. Lord, your will be done in earth just as it is in heaven. So he's giving us an example that the will of God, when we think of heaven, we think of perfection, we think of beauty. He's saying that the will of God, may it be not just in heaven, but here on earth as well. But we see if you jump down 20 chapters in Matthew chapter 26, we see that we're struggling with the will again here. Jesus just prayed that that your will be done. But now we see that he's in the garden of Gethsemane and he's getting ready to head to the cross. Here's a, a man who knew no sin getting ready to be sin and the weight of the world was on his shoulders. And so he was in the garden of Gethsemane. He was crying out to God and he said, my father, if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. In other words, Lord, if you got another way, Lord, if there's any other way, Lord, if you got another plan, if there's a plan B, let's go with plan B. But then he goes on to say, yet I want your will to be done and not mine. And when we pray that prayer, and how many ever prayed that prayer before? It's kind of scary because We can figure it out on our own. Most likely we can figure it out and we got the plan and we know the end result. We know, you know, if if I do this, this is gonna happen. We, We can all figure it out. But when we say, Lord, not my will, but yours be done, what we're saying is, Lord, I take my vision, I take my understanding, and I put it to the side and I hand it to you. Lord, I don't know what's coming. I can't see what's gonna happen, Lord, but not my will, but yours be done. And in the end, isn't it better to go with God's will than what we can understand? Isn't it better to do that? We even see in that same Matthew 26, right after this, Right after this, all of a sudden, here comes Judas, and here comes his little, uh, his little praise party, and they, they, they came to get Jesus. And then Jesus said this in verse 50, do what you came for, my friend. And the men stepped forward, uh, the men stepped forward, seized Jesus, and arrested him. And with that, one of Jesus' companions, what did he do? He reached for his sword, he drew it out, struck the, the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Right, He got a haircut, a little too close. Cut off his ear. And this is what Jesus said in verse 52. Put your sword back in its place. For all those who draw the sword will die, die by the sword. And then he said this. Do you not think that I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled to say it must happen in this way? What he was saying, listen, Father, if it's possible, in verse 39, Father, if it's possible, take this cup of suffering away from me. But the very moment he said these words, but yet, Father, not my will, but yours be done, he stepped into resolve. He was resolved that it's not my will any longer. Lord, I don't want that any longer. Here I am, not my will, but yours be done. He, he was sold on it. 
Jesus knew that he was going to go to the cross, but here was one of his buddies comes up and he's like, oh, what's that? And he, 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 cut, he gets karate chop number one and cuts off the dude's ear. But in this passage of scripture in Matthew, we do not see that Jesus went looking for his ear, picks it up and went over to the high priest and puts it back on. We don't see this. It's not recorded in Matthew, but we see that it comes back on. He heals him instantly, but yet they still took him to, he did a miracle right there, even when they were dragging him to the cross. Isn't that interesting? So we see here, Jesus said, hey, put that back away. I don't need this kind of help. I don't need this kind of help. And what's interesting, did you not think that I could not call 12 legions of angels? In Roman government, 12 or a legion was 6,826 men. So what Jesus was saying, do you not think that I could call more than 73,200 angels? He knew That all he had to do was say the word and God would do it. But he was resolved over here. Not my will, but yours be done. And some of us need to come to that resolve. You've been fighting, you've been wrestling with situations that are out of your control. Been fighting, you've been wrestling, you've been angry, you've been sad, you've cried your eyes out. But what you've got to come to is you've got to come to the same resolve that Jesus came to. Lord, I don't get this. Lord, I don't like this cup of suffering. I don't like this bitterness. I don't like what I'm going through. But Lord, I'm going to hold your hand and I'm going to declare, Father, not my will, but yours be done. And you watch what happens. It's so so funny, the moment that we release things into his hands, the stuff that's going on in the nation, if soon as you release it into your hands, it's that great exchange. I'm gonna take my aggravation and I'm going to exchange that for joy. I'm gonna exchange that for peace. I'm gonna exchange that for uh, patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness. I'm gonna do the great exchange. God gets the raw deal, right? He gives us the good stuff and we hand them over a bunch of ashes, right? So here we are, the will of God. So that's what we're gonna do today quickly. We're gonna look in the book of uh, Acts. So grab your Bible and turn to Acts chapter eight. We're talking about God's will. We're gonna break this down. We're gonna talk about the will of God and and we're gonna give you, I'm gonna give you five quick facts, if you will, on the will of God. Number one, the will of God is revealed one step at a time. Now, how many of you, you would be honest and you would say, you know what, can, can, can you just show me the whole thing and we can just get through this mess right real quick? Anybody of those takers here? Yeah, we got a few people that are gonna be honest in the room. God bless you. Yes, we would. We're like, Lord, here it is, the big picture. I can just see, there it is, the Grand Canyon. Okay, I see it all, it's good. But what happens is if we see it all, then we don't have to trust in him any longer. What I find about the will of God, it's revealed one step at a time. And that's where we're gonna look at this passage of scripture, the story about a man named Philip. Acts chapter eight, verse 26. And it says this, as for Philip, an angel of the Lord said to him, hey, listen, dude, Phil, Philly, I want you to go south down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. I just want you to go there. Didn't give him why. He just said, I need you to go down south the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So immediately, Philip started out. He started out. He didn't have to have any reasons. He didn't have to have any explanations. Just the Lord told him to go. So he started out and he met the treasurer of Ethiopia, a eunuch of the great authority under Candake, the queen of Ethiopia. And the eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship and he was now returning, seated uh, in his carriage. He was reading aloud from the book of the prophet of Isaiah. You see, he had no idea, Philip had no idea what the Lord had in store for him that day, but he was obedient. God just said, hey, listen, I need you to go down there to this road. I need you just to hang tight. 
Just need you to go down there. I need you to go down to the road. If the Lord told you to go down to a road, wouldn't you and I be like, for what? (laughs) Y'all do it for why? Why? Y'all know because your, your kids are saying, well, why? Because I said so, right? How many said that today? Just today. Oh, today. Oh, hands go up all over the place. Because I said so. You see, the will of God is revealed one step at a time. Philip had no idea that he was going to meet this Ethiopian. He had no idea who he was going to run into. But the angel of the Lord said, I need you to just go over here. Just do that. You don't need to take anything with you. You don't need to take any money. Just go over there and he started out. That's a leap of faith. That's a stretch of faith. You see, the will of God is revealed one step at a time. First Corinthians says it like this. Don't you realize that in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. Can I tell you this? You're gonna get to an age if you ever run in a race that you're just thankful you crossed the finish line. It don't matter if you won or not. Come on, how many, how many know what I'm talking about? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for crossing the line and I didn't die on the way, right? I did that years ago. I went I, I, with a whole group from our church. We went to a thing called the Tough Mudder. And so it was all these, you get electrocuted. Oh, it was the best day of my life. It was fantastic. I was pushing people into the shock stuff. It was great. <laughs> people are crying. I'm laughing. It was a really, really good day. And I got my orange headband. I got it. That's, as far as I'm concerned, I won the whole thing. Took me 25 hours, but I did it, all right? <laughs> but don't you realize that we all run in a race, everyone, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So run to win. All the athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that's going to fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. Everybody say purpose. I run with purpose in every step. I am just not shadow boxing, beating the air. So I run with purpose. You see, God reveals that one step at a time. Psalm 37 tells it like this. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. Though they stumble, they may never fall. They will never fall for the Lord holds them by the hand. Aren't you thankful for that? You see, so when we're talking about God's will and you need God's will in your life, you need for the Lord to complete something, you've got to understand this, that he's only going to reveal it one step at a time. Number two, the will of God, and I love this one, the will of God has perfect timing. The will of God has perfect timing. So look at it. Remember, angel of the Lord came to Philip, said, hey, I need you to run over here by this street and just hang tight. So here he is, Acts chapter eight, verse 29. The Holy Spirit then said to Philip, go on over and walk alongside of that carriage. Walk alongside it. So what did Philip do? He didn't say, why? With that blank stare, why? No, he, he said, okay. So Philip ran over and heard the man, remember the Ethiopian eunuch, we're, we're talking about a high official here, reading from the prophet of Isaiah. And Philip asked, hey, buddy, do you understand what you're reading? And the man replied, how can I understand unless someone explains it to me? And he urged Philip, hey, can you come on up here? Come on up in the carriage and sit with me. Do you see it? If Philip had not have responded to that angel that said, hey, I need you to, I need you to go over here to this, this street. If he had not moved immediately, he wouldn't have been there in time. And then when he got there and he's twiddling his thumbs, leaning up against the pole, wondering if, if the, you know, the, the drugstore is open so he can get him a milkshake, so he's, he's, and now the Holy Spirit says, hey, you see that carriage that's going there? I want you to run over there. So he's like, okay. You see, God's will has perfect timing. Now, my friend, my mentor, James D. Allen, he said this, God has never been late, but he sure missed a lot of opportunities to be early. How many can testify to that? 
It's like, Lord, right late in the midnight hour, here you come. You did it. But Lord, you could have done that a couple of weeks ago. If you would just listen to me, things would go a lot smoother. <laughs> see, that's how we think. That's how we think. You see, the will of God, he has perfect timing. He has everything laid out. Romans chapter five, verse six, I love this. It says this, when we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. He knew what we needed when we needed it. And really it has to do, timing has to do with trust. Doesn't it? Have you ever had the Lord tell you something and in the midst of it, uh, you're, you're just like, Lord, I'm gonna have to trust you in this because I know, I know what you said, but I'm still not seeing it. Lord, I know that you gave me a promise for my family. I know that you gave me a promise for my children, but Lord, I'm just not Seeing it, that's when you go back to the original word and you say, Lord, I know I'm standing on your promises. I'm not gonna be moved, devil. Yeah, I, my kids are still gonna be saved. My kids are still gonna be delivered. I'm still gonna hold on to the fact. You see, trust and timing go hand in hand. And that's what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells us. To trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not on your own stinking thinking. In all your ways, you acknowledge him and he'll direct all your paths. That's my interpretation, by the way. Lean not on your own understanding. How many have stinking thinking problems too? There's a few of you that, can, that, are, that are with me in that boat. You see, the will of God is revealed one step at a time, but the will of God, is all, it also has perfect timing at just the right time. Number three, the will of God. I like this one. The will of God isn't just about you. When we talk about the will of God, don't we think it's, it's, like, it's like those little white seagulls on Finding Nemo? Mine, 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 mine. The will of God, mine, mine. Oh, mm -mm, mine, right? We, we've got this idea that it's all about us, but it is clear through this passage that we are reading, God told Philip, hey, I want you to go over here, now go over there, and now we can see this, we can see this revealed. It was the will of God for him, but that will of God for him was directly linked for that Ethiopian official. Do you see it? It's not just about the will of God, just not about fulfilling your destiny and you, you, know, you, you get the brand new electric Hummer. Lord have mercy, an electric Hummer. Someone needs to be punched for doing that. <laughs> anyway, I digress. All right, the will of God is not just about you, but look at it. Acts chapter eight. Remember, he gets up in the carriage with this, this Ethiopian and he said, the passage of scripture you have been reading was this. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb is silent before its shearers, he did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants for his life was taken from the earth? And the eunuch asked Philip, he asked him, tell me, was the prophet Isaiah talking about him, him, himself or was he talking about somebody else? So beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. Do you see it? It's all lined. We've got someone that's hungry, but someone that's got the good news. Someone that needs the good news, someone that's got the good news, and the person that has the good news is following the will of the Lord. Hey, go over here. No instructions needed. Hey, run over here. No instructions needed. Hey, listen to this guy. No instructions needed. Hey, here's the words to say. And he crawls in there and he opens up his mouth and he shares the good news. You see, here's what... Here's what's interesting about that. We're not just talking about an Ethiopian eunuch that, you know, just was, was a slave. We're talking about a high official. We're talking about someone who had tremendous amount of influence. Listen, in those times, if you were nothing, you walked your way. 
you weren't riding in a carriage. So here we are. We have someone that comes along that receives the good news. We don't have really any reference of what happens about, uh, about this man or what, but I have to believe that an entire nation was affected with the gospel of Jesus Christ because of an encounter that Philip had with the Lord. Run over here, look over here, and now we're reading the prophet Isaiah. Yeah. You see, it's not just about you. Think about it. What would have happened if Philip would not have obeyed? He'd have been like, what? Why? Well, I've got something I got to do today. You know, I really wasn't planning on that. You know, I was going to play Angry Birds today on my phone. I mean, really? If he would have done something else, think about the effects of an entire nation He had access to the queen of Ethiopia. I guarantee you the gospel of Jesus Christ was presented to that nation and to that queen. I guarantee it. So if it wouldn't have happened, if we wouldn't have operated in the will of God, then everything would have fallen apart. Look at this, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slow. Remember, it's, he's not slow in keeping his promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. How many are thankful for God's patience? He's, thank, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but for everyone to come to repentance. You see, the will that God had for Philip was was directly connected to over here. He did not want this Ethiopian to perish. So the will of God, it's not just about you. Number four, talking about the will of God. The will of God, what does it do? It creates opportunity. I love this. Acts chapter eight, verse 36. So as they rode along, he's in the carriage. Philip is in the carriage. He's explaining to them the gospel of of Jesus Christ. As they rode along, they came to some water. And the, the eunuch said this, hey, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? And Philip's like, well, okay. Let's let her rip, tater chip. And so here we go. There's the water. Let's go. You can if you believe with all of your heart. And the eunuch replied, I believed that Jesus is the son of God. And what did he do? He ordered the carriage to stop and they went down in the water and Philip baptized him right there. Leonard Ravenhill said this, the opportunity of a lifetime must be seized within the lifetime of an opportunity. In other words, there's a window. There is a window and timing has got to be right. And I will tell you this, this is about, this is, this is really shows how merciful and gracious God is. If you're not going to cooperate, God will raise up somebody else. But I don't, I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be the second pick. I, I, I don't wanna be God's second choice. Y'all with me? I wanna learn to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and respond instantly. Look at your neighbor and say, I wanna be that person. You see, the will of God creates opportunity. Ephesians chapter five, and I love this. Ephesians says this, so be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most out of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Make the most out of every opportunity. And that's what God's will does. It creates opportunity for us to function in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And lastly, we're gonna land the plane with this one. The will of God. The will of God overflows with miracles. The will of God overflows with miracles. And here's the miracle. Acts chapter eight, verse 39 Remember, I'm minding my own business, run over down there to the Jerusalem, run over there to the old street. I'm hanging out here. Hey, run over there by the, by the carriage. I'm running over by the carriage. 
heard him speaking. Hey, do you understand what you're listening to? I don't, unless someone tells me, hop up in here with me. This is what I was reading. Well, do you understand it? No one can, I can't understand, is it, is, who's he talking about? Now he shares Jesus Christ. Now the man gets saved. Now here we go, over here. Now it's, now it's hey, there's some water. Let's be baptized. And here we are in the middle of the water. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. It was like a beam me up Scotty moment. Now here's what we have to understand. The eunuch never saw him again, but he went on his way rejoicing. Meanwhile, Philip found himself farther north at the town of Azotus, and he preached the good news. That's 30 miles away. Now we don't have that technology yet. But how many would like to be at Finley like that? Dayton, the Caribbean. (laughs) I knew what you were thinking. Do you see, when we operate in the will of God, miracles begin to happen. Take Take it to a different level. When you begin to operate and flow and submit yourself to the will of God and you're obeying God, think about it. Doors begin to open that never existed before. You with me? Doors that were closed, things that were slammed shut, hearts that were closed to the gospel. When you begin to move in the things that that the will of God has ready for you, It opens doors. Miracles begin to happen. You see, salvation, we're like, well, how is that a miracle? Listen, salvation is a miracle. How many of you, you were hard cases until you yield yourself to the Lord? I was a hard case. I was a hard head. You were a spoon head. I don't even know what that is, but you were that. But all of a sudden, a miracle happened in your heart. And more than likely, it was because someone else was following the will of God for their life. And now I'm affected. Hmm. John 14. We're gonna close with this. I tell you the truth. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works that I have done and even greater works because I'm going to be with the Father. You can ask me, this is Jesus talking, guys. You can ask for anything in my name and I will so that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. If you love me, obey my commands. You see, the will of God overflows with an abundance of miracles. The problem is we've gotten so numb to the fact that we don't even think of salvation as a miracle anymore. Salvation is the transformation of a heart that opens itself up to receive Jesus and says, here, Lord, please forgive me. I receive you. How many want the will of God for your life? You can have it today if you'll just surrender.